Nice, we've got some people in the chat popping in already. Feel free to do that, peoples. Say what's up. Hey, hey. <laughs> so this sound you're hearing right now has nothing to do with our Benny, except it's a tape loop made by Amulets. And uh, oh, I wish I hadn't opened my thing yet. I could drop the <laughs> cold one too. But uh, yeah, no, this is a tape loop made by Amulets with um, some OP1 coming into it. So guess what? Guess what, everybody? Do you know? Do you know what time it is? Do you know what day it is? Do you know what it is? It's this guy's post birthday. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Looks like I can click this. Ah, uh, no, I thought I could show some comments on the screen. Can't. So we're seeing Austin smiley face. Here he is ah. in, his, in his new studio. Oh, Testing. Man, it looks looking one, two, three. It's looking good, and 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 here I am. Yes. So I'm gonna learn to put these comments on the screen. I don't yet know how to do this, but Jogging House is saying it's hammer time, and I really want hammer <laughs> time to show up. Oh, I do this. Bam. <laughs> Jogging house, hammer time. <laughs> now, Austin, you can't see this right now. Oh, you can if you're looking at the if you look at the the YouTube part. But um, so it's a party today. It's a birthday party. I have balloons. <laughs> Austin doesn't have balloons, but he's got the birthday boy. So yeah, oh boy. You get I love those birthdays. pastel colors on the balloons. What about the pastels? I know I chose them specifically for that. I don't know if you noticed, Austin. I rearranged the balloons from the way they were taped up yesterday uh they're they're looking oh. um more uniform now <laughs> i think you just should you should just keep them on your rig at all times now yeah I, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll have time for uh you know for a video made with these so um should we start off with Balloon a little jam. jam can you make some sound austin uh maybe i can i can do this Hello? Oh, wait. Nice. Good one. Hello. Now we're talking. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody can do that. I don't know if anybody can do that. I don't know if anybody can do that. I don't have much to say there. There we go. 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 That didn't work out. You know the, the little um, what's what's the sequencer that's the hexagon on the OP one? What's that called? Mandala, 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 to be happening. Oh, real, 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 real. Hey, look at this. Here is Austin. Here is Austin. Here is Austin. I'm going to add these, add these to the screen. Thank you very much. Uh, here we go. Here's another. Yeah. Thanks for being on, everybody. Voice. Super cool. Super cool that you're here. If you can see over here on the side, that's actually what I want to play. I'm going to stop the tape. This was the uh, amulets loop. But... Let's go and open. Let's start by opening my birthday present to me from Austin. This is one of the cassettes. This is the cassette that comes with this. Oh, you know what? I just realized there's no record in here. It's in the other room on the player right now on the turntable. But that's what comes with. How do I do that? Yeah, with this, if you get the super deluxe thing or whatever, um, you get a custom tape loop by Austin and he doesn't even know what's on it because you I recorded them all in like two two days yeah. so here it is <laughs> essentially <laughs> I'm trying to remember what what this is this would be a chord Are you playing it at full speed or half speed? Well, truth be told, my Marantz, 
uh, doesn't play at proper speed, so the pitch may be Whoa. a little bit off. But it's I'm playing at normal speed. That's unless it's meant to be played at double speed. I have no idea. <laughs> it kind of sounds like it, doesn't it? It kind of sounds like a half speed. It could, I think it could be interchangeable. Yeah, exactly. Even play it at quarter speed. Yeah. Although the Marantz doesn't have... do that, right? You can't. You can only just turn the dial. Um, well, it has like the knob switch, right? Right. Well, Does yours not have a knob switch? There. That's the part. That's my favorite part of the tape. When it, uh, where the um, splice is, which means it's yeah. super long. Um, so before I answer the knob switch, does this tape wrap around the thing a little bit and then come down? Is that how it's got? It gets to be that long because when Ambulance yeah. makes these things, it's like five seconds, and this thing is like thirty yeah. seconds or more. That's yeah. Cool. So it does wrap around the thing. That... Someone's saying that you should raise your levels. Like you're coming in a little quiet. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Light bath. Can you raise your level a bit? Kind of quiet. Man. Still, huh? Okay. Yeah. Let's. I've been I've been trying my best without getting distortion to uh, here. There there it is a little bit more. Hopefully we don't get some. Wait, that's you. Okay. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah. If uh, I am technically clipping on effects. my side, but I might have enough headroom where I can clip like that and it doesn't sound that bad. So people, um, let me know. Let me know if it sounds not so good. Um, as long as I don't get too loud, I think it'll be I think it'll be good. But yeah, so that's that's the tape loop that comes with um, that came with my came with my record. I kind of want to show the actual record because it's this clear vinyl. Um, Austin, have you gotten? Have, do you are you have any of that in hand? Do you have the actual um, clear? I vinyl? have a copy in the other in the other room. Yeah, so it's probably the same situation where yeah, exactly. I have to get up and go get it too. Yeah, so. yeah. Maybe I will at some point. We'll see. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Also, the printing on this is oh, still sounding good. Thanks, Belly Full of Stars. It's um, it's it looks so good. Like I don't know if you yeah. can even see. It actually looks better to me on the tape than I mean. Not it's not that the record doesn't look good. Um, the record looks amazing. Um, here let's see which which side are we on here. So this is like the up of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the record looks amazing, but the tape has so much texture to it the way it's been printed and the grays have been like changed like i thought it was a really cool design sorry everything's mm -hmm. reversed here it's weird it's a really cool design thing going on um with the way the um the artist used different uh different colors um different shades so. yeah femke uh, yeah. who works with dow she does a great job yeah, so she's, man i love all of her work um I don't even have a, a copy of that tape artwork yet, so it's like okay, yeah. yeah. That's it's really cool to to see it. I think I've seen photos of it from people that have gotten them, but um, yeah. Is it screen I think printed? It, is that what that is? Is that I the tape? Don't know because it feels like ink sitting on top of paper. <laughs> so that would be yeah. like screen printing when you probably right. So I would think. Maybe, but um, whatever it is, it's definitely um, thick there. Oh, here we got some good stuff here. Um, so Jogging House made you birthday pancakes, but he ate them uh, It's silk screened. Oh, it's silk screened. Okay. Oh, silk screens when you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you're they're silk and you, yeah, there's a screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Made of silk. Um, yeah, Soy milk. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, I did that once um, the, years ago. What was it? I got like, I was making a joke. I picked up ice cream and I was like going to head, heading to like my, like my first girlfriend's place. <laughs> that was a long time ago. And I was heading over and I had half of the ice cream. It was like melting and I was eating it. I was like, I got you ice cream, but it melted. So I had to eat it. And it was only half of it. And she actually was a little upset about it. And I'm like, Wait a minute, my joke backfired. This is just supposed to be a joke. Not supposed to be <laughs> like like you're missing something, like you're missing out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Well, um, I'll turn the music off. I don't know. Is it harder to hear with the music? Who knows? Who knows? I couldn't even hear the hear the music. Okay, because I did. I, I mean, it was really it was really low, so yeah. I don't think it was too much. Well, maybe we'll keep it on here. Maybe I'll yeah. open it up and change some notes. Let's do, uh, let's do this. 
Austin likes G minor. You like G minor, yeah? You like to use like B flat, <laughs> right? Probably. I mean, and I, like, I, yeah. maybe an E flat. Probably. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. It's I like all of them. Well, I don't. Uh, yeah. I, I like specific ones. I definitely feel yeah. more comfortable in certain keys, and I tend to mm-hmm. not deviate too far from C left or right in the circle of uh-huh. fifths, right? So I only add so many sharps or so many flats because too many and I, I get I get like confused or something. I know people say that D flat is actually really easy for piano players like because it, it's like all black keys and just two white keys, I guess, right? But um, it's weird for me. So F and B flat feel good to me and I tend to gravitate toward those. Um, do uh, uh i'm yeah. all about that uh f sharp a sharp infinity Wait. that's a godspeed joke oh. godspeed you black emperor <laughs> for all my my post rock heads out there <laughs> no but i i i, I yeah um I, yeah i'm not too well versed in uh music theory note speak i just do it do whatever sounds good yeah yeah <laughs> So. I, that would be interesting if 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 we get we were talking about this before we hopped on here, like w- that if we could have like a second camera on gear or something, it would be cool to have to mm. see your hands when you just naturally play stuff. Um, <laughs> I know you and I have been playing more keyboards lately. You've always yeah. played keyboard, actually. I'm the one that's getting more keyboard in, but but you have you have you you like had the the peak for a long while right and yeah and then the summit showed up and yeah just one day it showed up at my doorstep like a <laughs> like a child yeah i adopted it. it it had legs and um on the box yep and it was uh, in a it was in a little cradle yeah yeah swaddled yeah. yeah um and uh but and i hear it crying every now and then you do that pitch bend stuff <laughs> so you yeah. know that um, but yeah, so you've been you've been you've been doing that more. I'm curious if like you found yourself doing any new like things in turn. I'm stuck on this note thing. I want to talk notes. I just want to talk notes for mm-hmm. a second. Like, because I went down here and I just played F G B flat D, like, and that's like that's comfy territory for me. Like, I know what that's going to sound like, and I know some of the other notes that I can like play with that. Just picture wise, are there certain like pictures that you do you see it visually like that like if or if, if you're not actually thinking notes like what is it how do you get around okay well maybe uh, yeah um there's certain different approaches i have to it so sometimes it is just just getting my hands on it and starting with the chord and just kind of working my way around the keyboard and being like, okay, that doesn't sound good. This sounds good. So yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, and, teaching yourself the boxes to hit. Yeah. You know, it's like, you remember and that game I, from yeah. a long time ago where there's a bunch of cards laid out in a grid and you flip a card over and it's like, there's an apple on that. And then you flip it back over and mm. you're supposed to remember that the apple's there. And then you go, yeah, and the memory another. game. Yeah, exactly. It's like playing the memory yeah. game with the keys. Yeah. And um, I, I think, yeah, now that I've been doing it for a while, I feel like I know what kind of works. Or like I know, like okay, don't hit these like notes on the keyboard when I play this chord shape or yeah. whatever. Um, and the other thing I've been doing is I'll just whatever I'm into at the moment, like listening to music, I'll try to figure out what scale and like what notes are being played in that song, and then like. I'll make something based around that scale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like copying the actual song, but but just finding the pitch set that that that, that song Yeah, is because used. I like where this song is sitting, so I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm going to figure this out and then kind of work my way and like try to create a similar feeling because I think there is feelings when you're playing in certain scales and keys, you know. That's very cool. This is actually this reminds me, I don't know if Griffin Paisley is on right now, but he had asked something on, over in the Patreon thing, the um creative mentorship thing one of his questions this last month which by the way i haven't edited the video for the 
for the <laughs> for the um like public to see that one yet but like for the youtube to see it it's on just on patreon but he was asking about like certain feelings and mm. and 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 linking that with like chords or like I'm trying to straighten my hat or like um <laughs> or or just basically just like if i want to translate certain feelings into music like how do you do it what do you do you know and um this is cool that you, sounds almost like you have a little bit of a catalog where you're like i know the certain chord shapes and certain like chord scales you know like chords and scales like combination zone that will elicit certain emotions is that do you have it to that point do you you know do you know i think it's mean? more that the specific notes and chords aren't eliciting the emotions it's more about the progression too yeah so like how they fit together because you could i think you could have like the same chord progression but one slight little difference could make it more positive as opposed to like a more um darker kind like of melancholic thing, thing. yeah yeah, yeah I, and, that happens to me yeah. a lot in fact the chord that was on your tape a second ago right when that yeah. is on um I I listened to it at first and I was like I could hear where Austin would go with this but then automatically where I went with it it went to this like bright place it was like the video I put up on Instagram and stuff for this the little promo for this like was me playing stuff along with that and it was like it was like the bright thing like I've always like almost always gone toward the bright yeah <laughs> <The> light bath <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, you're not. Um, night bath, dark Benny. I don't know. I'm trying to come back at you. With night, something bath. There. night, night bath, night, night. Yeah. Dark bath. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, um, melon, colic Benny. That doesn't, yeah. But you know, um, but our ways of what we naturally like go to with sound. And that's kind of what's not a lot of my answer was to Griffin was just like, I just, feel and do you know and even if i'm feeling pretty like emotionally raw and there's a lot that i've been going through often it doesn't necessarily mean i end up making melancholic sounding music even like it's 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 like the emotions can be conveyed without the like the chords being that surface level of, of, mm. I don't know, I can't even know how to say what I'm saying, but you know, it, it's kind of, <laughs> I think what it is, is like, we make so much, um, music that we have the ways that we learn to interface with music and, and what makes sense to us. And I think maybe I've done so much of that, <laughs> that like I automatically, so um, did make a, the sounds come out the way they, the way they always come out. And then the, it's like the emotions are an underlying thing with that. Um, yeah, are you laughing at Jogging House's thing? No. Oh, I'm laughing at a Aaron Scott's comment about light bath, fighter of the night bath. <laughs> I didn't see that one. When, what, or maybe it's, oh, there, he just did it. Okay, I've got a little yeah. delay when it comes up. This is too good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, man. It's always sunny in Philadelphia is, is some brilliant. So... <laughs> Um, would anyone yeah. actually? There's nobody on other than Austin. Austin, would you care to sing the Light Bath Fighter, the Night Bath song? Um, do you have any um, technological things I don't think that can so. help you? Get I'm not that? singing. <laughs> not, not even. With I don't your, want to sing with your technological um, uh, no. appendage, new appendage there that you have there. Because I don't no singing. Okay, for me. <laughs> all right. So, so okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pitch, pitch my, my voice up. up. That's what I'm talking about. Me to do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. Yeah. I don't want to sing. Yeah. I'm too. I'm too like too shy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I forget. I have to. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. If I want to go do ahead, it, I have to do this stuff. So <laughs> unfortunately, I everything's like oh, all sprayed out mm -hmm. with mine. It's like. Fuck. There we go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is really stupid. So yeah, Sorry, we're gonna be just, really stupid, we're gonna be but... doing this. <laughs> yeah, pitched up Austin sounds a lot like hopped up Charlie Day. Uh, I was actually thinking that pitched up Austin wow. sounds <laughs> like um, uh, 
Adventure Time? The Little Worm? Adventure Time. I, f- I forget what the worm's name is. If somebody knows. Yeah, Richard so, Scary? T- oh, no, Richard Scary is a different thing. <laughs> Just this it doesn't ridiculous. matter what you say. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I yeah. can, I don't have the technological capabilities right now to get into that um, to do what what you just did. But yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, um, well, tides bath. That's good. That's good. Totally. I like that. Just, but going back to the the keyboard thing, yeah, is because before I was doing the keyboard stuff. I was using the Electride 2 as my main sequencer. And the way that they have it set up where you can play on the pads, yeah. when you choose the scale and key and all that stuff, every pad just becomes a part of that scale and key instead of like on the BeatStep Pro or something like that where it makes a keyboard yeah. and certain things are lit up and stuff. Yeah. So this way, whatever you hit, you don't hit any wrong notes. So like it was almost like cheating in a way. When I was using that as the main sequencer, I was like, yeah, but well, it's still kind of notes. intervals. Like, like you're still thinking, like you're probably aware. Like, I want to move farther in the scale, so you mm. move farther. You see, you skip a couple scale degrees. So you're just thinking. It's almost like you end up just thinking scale degrees. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that that was how you started. With yeah, you had that. It's funny. I I I went and bought one of those on eBay at, at one point because I was just like, Austin gets such good stuff with it. Let me try it out. And I, it, I didn't jive with it, so I ended up selling it pretty much right away. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I think I remember you getting one, yeah. I think I was asking you about it and stuff around the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. Shelby the Worm. Shelby. That's exactly it. Shelby. <laughs> Austin sounds like Shelby when he pitches his voice up like that. Shelby the Worm. I don't know. I've never seen Adventure Time, so oh, I don't know. Oh, you're missing out. I, I highly recommend checking it okay. out i think it's uh it's like one of the best things i've ever seen <laughs> like i'm I'm not i'm not exaggerating it's it's probably one of my favorite shows so um okay well so you had a birthday last week it was, know, this is the first time hearing about it yeah <laughs> what day was it uh, I, someone told uh, me it was so it was one of those days yeah exactly i'm um, not a big birthday person so yeah i know that's what that's what austin said to me in the very beginning he was like i was like i want to do a thing for your birthday let's it's going to be after your birthday let's just make a birthday party out of it and he was like i'm not really a big birthday person i was like it'll be fine we're gonna do it it's gonna be great i think you just wanted to have balloons so I, mean, the... I think so <laughs> yep oh man yeah uh, so the, so, so so orbital patterns here says you know from what i can tell you two have polar opposite but e- equally viable approaches for a second i thought he was talking about personality too um but i think i think, there's I a think lot we're of, both opposite. pretty silly yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah there's definitely different um approaches though you are the master of puns i don't even know if i want to talk about um the the pun the amazing oh pun you have to that, do we have to you, you have said? to <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah. so all right then i'm just gonna all right i'll just say this so what happened was in my youtube stream in my not stream in my um uh the algorithm served up videos to me right and out of nowhere came this video of this drummer <laughs> playing enter sandman with dildos okay and so i <laughs> sent it to austin right you know and his response was Mephalica. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. that is the most brilliant pun I, I think well, ever. So just, I think you also you also said I don't know. I think I said whoa, and you're like I don't know why this sh- came up. I never searched for Metallica or anything phallic. I was like that's right, Metallica phallic, Mephalica. So it, we have a I good was- see that. So I, I let, it was an assist. <laughs> Is what it was yeah. like, and so yeah, we've got. I saw the words right next to each other. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, okay, so 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 it was your birthday, and you saw um, you saw a massive attack for your birthday last night, basically, even though it wasn't your. Well, birthday I mean, I, I I saw them last night because they postponed from March. So <laughs> well, but they postponed it because it was your birthday. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, imagine. Yeah. Oh wait. Imagine the logo for Mephalica. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Instead of the lightning bolts at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Enter Sandman takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. So Ride good. Right to lightning. So, um, which one's Shaq? 
It, it, oh, I'm definitely Chuck. Yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah, I'm 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 Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe what was the... Bryant Null Bath. <laughs> so uh, yeah, okay. So so it was your birthday. You saw Mass Attack. How was Mass Attack? Um. Well, first things first. Uh. Yeah. When you get to be a certain age, general admission standing only, like at a concert, yeah. is not fun. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> So, that happened to me at a Panda um, Bear show. I was just like, you know what? I think I'm too old for this. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was like, I wish I was up there in the seats, like relaxing instead of like my legs are falling asleep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they said they're going to start right at eight, but instead they had like 90s music playing. Uh, <laughs> I guess like music that came out in 98, the same year as Mezzanine. Oh, okay. So, but it was like, had like a filter over it. So you would hear like Britney Spears and Cher and like all this pop music, <laughs> but you couldn't really hear it. Cause it was, had like a low pass filter on it. Really? That, that was an artistic just go, choice, on, like, right? An hour. Oh yeah. I think they were trolling us basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a pretty, pretty awesome show. They played all of mezzanine and, uh, but they didn't play it in order, which was interesting. They played it like out of order, and there was a lot of they played a lot of covers too, which was interesting. Oh wow! Like all, they covered the Cure, like yeah, Bauhaus, right? All era specific, uh, era appropriate covers. Yeah, I think it's a lot of stuff that probably inspired them for that album. I think I was reading. So, um, yeah, okay. I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty intense. They had two drummers and. Uh, yeah, it was very much like a rock show. It's not what I expected. <laughs> I thought it was going to be more. Uh oh, there goes a balloon. <sighs> Wouldn't it be Take great if, if one by one the balloons just start falling off? And by the time, like we can't, we can't end this live stream until they've all fallen off. I used gaff tape oh, though, so I don't. I'm not. <laughs> this might, this might be a bit long. I think, might go on for 24 hours. <laughs> I think we're. I'm going to tap out before the balloons do. But yeah, it's cool that the I've one. We still have s- symmetry, though. I-, I like that. Yeah. So it was uh, the one yellow balloon. Yeah, yeah. I just, sun balloon. Just the way it worked out, you know. Yeah. So um, okay. So very, very cool on the birthday. Um, I, let's just jump into some of the stuff I wanted to talk about. So um, sure. you did a European tour. Um, by the way, some someone's saying, you know, will it get archived? Yes, it will be archived. So you'll be able to see all this later. So you know, nobody sweat if they're not able to, you know, hang on here. So Austin, you did a European tour and, um, the person who helped you, uh, book it or really did the booking, I guess, or maybe helped you, right. I mean, did most of the booking, I guess, uh, is doing that with me. And so I've got one coming up too. And so I'm, I'm really curious, like how it went, like, what did you learn? You know, I would definitely want to talk about your setup that you used. Like we here, I actually have a, um, check this out people. Boom. I have a photo of it. Um, so we're going to talk about that in a second, but I, first I just want to know like how to go, like, would you do it again? Mm. I would definitely do it again. Good. I thought I, I had a, yeah, it was a really good experience. I thought, um, yeah, just, I think the first thing I learned or thought, like, especially after playing the first show in Oslo was just like, Holy crap, there's, this is real. (laughs) Like there's people on the other side of their planet that are familiar with some dumb music that I've made. So it was kind of, (laughs) kind of a trippy, trippy experience. Um, But yeah, I mean, a lot of the time I was either traveling or, um, yeah, it was definitely, uh, it's very high stress, but it was very, very, uh, worth it. I think I, I set myself up. So I had to be like constantly moving. Almost, so yeah. that is a point I was, I was talking with tour veteran Emily Sprague the other day and we were talking about, and she was just like, I don't, I don't suggest that you set it up like a normal tour, like the grind. And then I was like, yeah, I'm thinking of like backing off and trying to take it slow and trying to leverage like people that I know that I can stay with, you know, and like staying in certain places a little bit longer. 
like almost yeah. staying like a week in a place and using that place maybe as a hub, you know, hub. especially using Ghent in Belgium yeah. as like a hub for going around because because Peter Dow um, is, you know, um, who we're talking about that did this booking. He's the one, you know, responsible for this. And so it's it. Yeah, I'm it, texting with him right now, actually. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is he is he watching this? Is he on with this? I think he's traveling right now. Okay, yeah. He's gotcha. in the middle of traveling. So. Okay. And, um, oh, Griffin's on now. Um, Griffin says, hey, Griffin, I'll tell you, um, you can rewind and you'll see that um, that we talked about you a little while ago. So, so, but back to EU tour business. You. you know, like, yeah, not just like new city every night, almost every night, here's a day off, and then even more. Like, I think it would be rough because I'm trying to go out for like two months, though. I'm trying mm -hmm. to like be out for a while. And I think that was the main thing of why, like, you know, maybe we should back off a little bit here. You Yours was like not that long, though, right? It was like 12 days or something. What was it? Well, part of the trip uh, <laughs> was a vacation. So I, I was in Iceland for about uh, half, the, half the time. Very cool. So just exploring Iceland. So I think all the shows took place maybe over, I want to say eight or nine days, six, six mm -hmm. shows like that. It's yeah. The numbers may be a little off, but yeah. it was kind of staggered a bit. Like part of the, the tour, I went out to Oslo and then came back to Iceland. Yeah. So, and then went out and came and did the rest of the tour. And there was like situations where like, yeah, okay, I'm in a city for three days, but then there's one more situations where like, okay, I need to be in the next city the next day, three days in a row, something like that. So maybe we should, I'm curious about Iceland. Like, yeah. like all tour aside, had you been to Iceland before? No, oh. there's been a lifelong dream of going. So yeah. I felt very, uh, very proud to her, very happy that I got a chance to go. Yeah. So yeah. I I remember some photos from around that time. Those photos were in Iceland, weren't they? On your on your Instagram, I'm trying to probably I probably posted too much about it, but oh, I was I think it was great having the time of my life. So. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I've never been. It's just like you drive down the street and there's like, oh, there's another waterfall. Let's go check it out. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it was very very nice. I, I wish I had more time to spend there. Like, it's definitely not enough time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping it, one thing Peter said to me was, uh, he was just like, do you want to go to Iceland at all? And I'm like, do I? Like, <laughs> of course. So it would be really cool if somehow I can, somehow we can like manage that. Like a um, show there. Yeah. Even if it's just that yeah. I'd, I would like to have like a, at least a couple of days or something, you know? Um, the whole thing is, is like balancing, the, the financials, like, I don't want to be in the red. I don't want to come back like in debt. <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole point is to be able to make it through it, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. so, but I also want to be able to spend enough time, um, take a trip to Reykjavik. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, yeah, that's like, that's, that's totally, totally it. But, um, all right. So, you know, what about, um, I remember when we first talked, after right right when you were like coming back like you were in transit back to the u.s i think was when we were like talking i was in brooklyn at the time and um you were talking about packing you, you learned something mm. about like the personal side of things not the gear and stuff but like like what you need for like traveling like w what went down with that oh i <laughs> i would say that in general i probably overpacked uh, I had never done a trip like this before. Like I've traveled before and I, I stayed in a country for a long extended period of time, yeah. but it's a lot different when you have to travel every other day because yeah. then you're constantly packing, repacking stuff. Yeah. And if you're going to the airport, you're going through security. And if you're carrying a bunch of music gear, you're going to get questions no matter what. Yes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was, that was probably the my least favorite part was going through that process, going through security, taking out all the electronics. Um, oh, yeah. It sucked. <laughs> okay. So and then the other thing was I packed 
I had two bags, so I was hoping that I would be able to have two carry-ons. And uh, oh, there's Peter. <laughs> yes, there he is. Hi, Peter. We've been um, we've been talking about you. Yeah, talking shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. No, but uh, uh, you, you pack two uh, bags. You know, like what? Uh, you, you mean so, you? Yeah, keep going, keep going. Because you could have one as like one carry-on and then one personal item. But then, yeah. you know, if you're not lucky, they'll make you be like, okay, yeah, this bag is too big for a personal item. You're going to have to check it. Okay. So there would be situations where I'm sitting there at the airport, like, taking all my expensive gear and putting, like, all the music gear and putting it in my carry-on, okay. taking out everything else and putting it in the check bag. No. And, yeah, there was times when I had to abandon some stuff, too, like... I, I came home with less stuff. Than I, oh, I hope nothing like too big of a deal. Like, no, I mean some clothes. Yeah, pair of shoes. <gasps> um, also, I uh, uh, my Nintendo Switch was either stolen from me or yeah. I dropped it at the when I was leaving SFO, yeah. San Francisco, like before I left that trip. And, and you like, had just gotten it too. Yep. So I uh, chalked it up to a lesson learned. Um, yeah. And my headphones, too. So my exactly. headphones were gone. So I bought, like, a piece of shit headphones at the airport that I had for the whole tour. And I was like, this is this sucks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I probably could have brought less less clothes, less electronics. Like, I don't think I needed to bring my camera or my laptop. Like, my phone would have been fine for Personal every situation. Electronics. Yeah, okay. Not yeah. gear not set up because you actually yeah you you, you like and a blow, i didn't need my blow dryer i i didn't really need that <laughs> yeah. either in my uh, personal personal uh, space heater <laughs> yeah, yeah right my my oil filled uh <laughs> heater my yeah yeah um my portable shower um you know mm. yeah <laughs> my um oh the um bowflex so 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 no okay then, so, yeah, yeah yeah keep 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 going keep going yeah i i just yeah i would have probably packed lighter next time oh man and just found a way to like uh wash clothes and stuff okay so speaking oh, of clothing yeah. i've done some research because i'm like getting ready like really early well, I, my tour is not going to be till april and may and i've been doing a lot of of like one bag travel research like when people do that and I won't be just having one bag, but I'll have one bag, well, I'll have two bags, hopefully, you know, or I'll have like <laughs> my synth, my modular, whatever, whatever my, whatever something is that doesn't fit in a bag and then the bag. And so, um, what you can do is like, you can wear Merino wool and mm. you literally have two of them. You have the ones on your body. And you have a backup if you're going super minimal. And that counts for like boxer briefs. It counts for underwear, you know, socks and shirts. And mittens. merino wool, it mittens. Yeah. It, Kit, kitten mittens. Kittens. M merino wool is not cheap no. though. But still, if you only have two of them, it's it's kind of awesome. So I've already started on the underwear front. They're amazing. There are people that can wear them for like weeks without washing them and they don't get the funk it you know like that's the whole point or so they wool. or so they say yeah well i I, <laughs> I can i can do like a week so so far i'm good on a week oh, okay. you just gotta you know this is all like body fluids aside here um but but uh, but uh you get this you get this wool wash that's like you can take it in one of your little 2.5 ounce like containers that you put in your you know like mm. little go tube or whatever those things are called jogging house likes the kitten mittens so you, yeah you can you can do that uh and then it's a wool wash that is a leave-in wash so you fill up the sink with some water you put the wash in it you soak the stuff you kind of squeeze it up you know squeeze it a little bit you let it soak for like 20 minutes you take it out you don't even rinse it and you just let it dry and done and so if you just like do that and have a clean pair ready you're you're good. So that's what I'm going to try for to wear my actual yeah smart wool. I'm actually wearing smart wool 
boxers right now, boxer briefs right now. This is just a cotton shirt, but you know, um, I haven't gotten all all the gear yet because it's expensive stuff. You got like, I got time, you know. No, but like that's that's the idea. I'm gonna like have that the clothing stuff down really light, but I'm still I still haven't figured out the the gear. Like well, personal electronics, yeah. I'm gonna have to have a laptop on me. Like I, I just that's I could be wrong after tour. I might be like, yeah, I actually never had time to do work of that sort sort. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to keep up with some of the work that I do. Um, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Dude's, uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, Hey, I got, I got no shame. So <laughs> although I am turning a little red. Um, no, but so, um, yeah, like personal electronics, I'll probably bring the laptop, you know, um, to do work. I'm going to be bringing my camera is the thing. Cause I want to shoot video, of all this stuff. And so it's making the setup like, a lot larger. I'm hoping I can do it with a backpack that will be um, the carry on and then a Pelican case that'll be the checked. And that if there are, but I'll always try for the backpack being the personal item, but it'll probably be too big because it's a big, it's like a, you know, 40 liter, 35 liter backpack. Um, and TMI, yeah, maybe, but hey, you know, Close your ears. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's, it, if you want to learn the stuff, it's not too much information. If you want to learn about it, like it's useful stuff. No, but like, uh, and then the, the carry on, if, if the, if the Pelican is carry on size, it would be shooting for that to not have to check bags. You know, when I was talking to rodent, he was saying, Hey, I don't recommend that you check anything. Or if you check something, it should be your clothing. It shouldn't be your gear. Cause he's like too many times have I, um, flown internationally and have the stuff not arrive in time for the show or for the event, you know, like going to super booth and stuff like that, especially, you know? So did you have any issues with anything that you had checked not showing up at the, at the destination with you? Not in that okay. situation. No. That's I, but I'd still tried my best not to check any gear just be, be to be safe. Okay. So. Wait a minute. So you didn't check. Most of the time you did not check anything. Only when you were forced to. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I wouldn't and then I wouldn't check there the case was with one time or a few times where I did have to check some gear, but I was just like, okay, I'm at least going to keep the modular with me. Um yeah. just yeah. Yeah, exactly. You just like that's going to be in your hand and everything and else. Thankfully is, nothing happens. So. But cuz the other stuff is going to be cables and everything that you need to make the modular even work. So it's not like oh, so many cables. That's the thing. Not and, too many cables. <laughs> well, I think about that with um like if you have like a modular setup that is self-contained, then the cables are actually pretty minimal cuz they're already plugged in, hopefully, you know. And you just need your power for it. But as soon as you start adding external devices, it actually becomes a thing like the cables end up taking up just as much space as the modular almost, you know, maybe not same weight, but, um, yeah. Um, so Eucarin, E U C A R I N, I think is, is that what it's called? Uh, I, somebody asked, um, what that detergent is called. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description. Not now, but <laughs> later. Uh, Hopefully I remember that. So let's just, let's just leave it at that. I think that's what it's called. It's like a eucalyptus, um, lanolin based, um, wash, lanolin. but yeah. So belly full of stars is bringing us right into, um, into this next, uh, this next, this next thing. So what was your modular case that you used for the trip? So I'm going to bring up the photo of that. Um, so yeah, man, do you want to talk about, um, your setup? Like why you chose those modules and, how it worked out and what your process was and, and all that kind of stuff. Cause man, I'm so curious. I've been waiting since you've been back to really get into the nitty gritty of this. Hmm. <laughs> well, like, I, I don't know. I, no, I, I'm trying to remember what was in the case. Cause I don't have, uh, I don't have the, the picture in front of me. Oh, it, it's, just, I, well, it's just the one from your um, Instagram. I mean, if you want to pull that up on your phone or whatever. Yeah, I'll do it by memory. Okay, yeah. So I think the main pl plan was to, like, condense 
my main setup that I use live into like a small compact setup, like even smaller than what the seven U that I usually use. Like if I'm playing domestically yeah. and what I've been doing the last couple of years is using the ER 301 as kind of like the launching, like the, the hub for the whole live set. Like I'll play loops or make loops based all in the 301 and then that gets routed out to different effects, different samplers, different loopers. And I kind of build the track that way. Um, so whether I'm using real real oscillators or not, like oscillator samples, stuff like that, it all gets routed to the 301 and yeah. then gets distributed out to the rest of the system. Right. And this is this so, is all your 7U set. This is the, like the 7U approach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is actually... So this is like right the... Yeah. Yeah. So... <clears throat> the uh yeah i decided i ended up getting a case from black hole cases which i see scott mentioned yeah. and uh yeah i love the color on it it's got like I, I don't know if it's on the picture but it's got like this like green color that i really love it's like which matches the cables green. that i use yeah exactly yeah. and it matches those balloons yes that's why i chose you. them um, yeah but yeah so i guess like the idea was to build a, a little system around the 301 and then have some modulation and fit as many effects as I, and loopers that I could in there. Yeah. Which I think I ended up with clouds and morphogene. Yep, clouds is on the top. Morphogene yeah. and 301 are the bottom row. And the top row, other than the 4 HP of power, is PAMS, MALT, clouds, the OOTs and those yeah. other things, and then the, then the red output. Yeah, so... Yeah, the, the knob farm stuff, yeah, like the mixer and the external uh, effects send and receive. Yeah. I was very happy that I found those because they're all like 4 HP yeah. and they can connect through the back. So you don't need to waste space like using cables on them. Oh, right. I and they don't count that. as like a channel. So you can still use the other three channels and then the channel that's going through the back counts as like a fourth input essentially. Oh, cool. So So you're you're chaining them. That's what's happening. They're they're being exactly. chained from behind. That's brilliant. So I had this like weird convoluted signal flow where basically I wanted to be able to send the 301 to both clouds and morphogene but then also have a dry signal from the 301, but then also send the dry signal and both of those other signals to the send receive thing, which went to the Empress Zoya. Uh So I was using that as like another effects thing, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, uh, so that would come back into the system. And then the final mixer would have, everything like or at least the dry signal and uh oh, poor connection oh really <laughs> did, did we lose it on the on the on the stream? i think we're still here okay cool but yeah so I, i'd have to go through and look at my patch again but yeah it was I'm pretty so, i'm so curious yeah, how I, you ended up because those are three channel those mixers are basically three channels plus the the chaining of each one plus the fourth and so yeah. You have, There's a lot of stuff with like the malt and stuff. Too, right, so, so you'd have to you'd have to malt um, the outputs of the 301. So the 301 had just stereo outs, or you had separate outs going from that. Um, I had I had two different stereo outputs from the 301. So one would be going into all the effects, and then one would be a completely separate stereo channel with stuff that wasn't going to be affected at all. Okay. So I put stuff like lower frequencies, like yeah. bass stuff in there, like field recordings and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, um, I think so. Then I was going to use the, uh, the, you know, the 16 N fader bank. Yeah. So I was going to use, use that to control the 301. So I would have like my loops or whatever on the 301 and I would control it with that. And then also use the remaining sliders to, like, change the stuff on PAMS, like the modulation that was going on. The two CV inputs in, yeah. in, with PAMS. Yeah. And then affecting other stuff on the 301. But, of course, right before the first show, the the fader bank broke. 
but um, which was the USB. Like I ax- I'm so stupid, but I left the USB cable plugged in from mm. when I was um, doing like a sound check at the person's house that I was staying at. I, from the house to the venue, it snapped off. I was like, ah. Oh. So like I'm going in and like taking out all those connections because I was gonna have to go in and change the levels manually. Yeah. And yeah, completely changed. <laughs> you had to redo but, your your 301 patch. Basically, you had to undo the the way it was set up and do it so that oh, you yeah. could just go through with the big knob and do all your levels. So you had to do one level at a time. You couldn't do two at a time with one hand and another hand and separate fingers. No. Wow. And this was right when the new firmware came out, which has like this a way where you would be able to affect multiple stuff at a time, but I wasn't going to put the firmware on. Yeah. No. Cause I, I wanted to have something stable. Yeah, so I was dangerous. like, okay, well, just going to have to do it this way. <laughs> how, how would it work multiple at a time? In other words, you, you're, you're assigning the encoder to like multiple things. There's like a, this thing, I can't remember what it's called, but it's almost like the slider on the Octatrack. Oh, okay. It essentially works. Like that. Well, I guess yeah, I could still assign like between two points. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's yeah. Because I haven't been ever since I sold the 301. I haven't been following what's what's been going on with it. But that's that's cool. And there is like the global controls too. I guess I could have done that, but oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. that was one of the things I left behind in Europe. The Fader Bank. I was like, well. Oh no! I didn't even think about that. Oh. I gave it. To, I think Peter has it right now. Okay. So that's. Yeah. I think he's gonna get it fixed, and then. All right. That's yeah. cool. So it's not like you're leaving it at the airport. And like a trash no, bag no, or something, no. you know. It's still worth something, I think. Yeah, no, part. of course. I, I think it's repairable. Of course, it'd be repairable. Yeah. Oh man, wow, wild man. Oh, pro output, not red output. That's what it says. It's the WMD pro output. Thanks, thanks, Griffin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, the the main um, approach here. Oh, wait a minute. We have a question. What's the mixer called? The mixer is. Well, yeah, Hilo, is that what it's called? H Y? Hilo? Hilo? Hilo. There's an R in there. <laughs> and the R is after the Y, H Y R L O? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, just if, if you go to knob.farm, it's on there. Like okay. that's the website. Great. Uh, those mixers are amazing. I, I, I feel like a lot of, like, for doing stereo mixing, there's usually like dual mono. So you have like a separate level yeah. for each. This is just one knob for both pairs. It's the way it should be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I, it, if I were doing more <laughs> in the box mixing, I think that's what I'd be using. I, I don't yeah. see anything else that's, that's a better option at this, at this point, I think. But, but yeah. Wow, man. So let's see, looking, looking here. Um, I was just thinking with them. So, so the main approach, H Y R L O. Okay. Hylero. Hylero. Hylero glyphics. Hylero. I wonder how how it's intended. Hylero. 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 Cool. So, w- main approach with this. So instead of having you know um, MIDI from. Uh, I'm going to look behind you to remember what it's called. Hermod. Um, instead of having that happening, <laughs> then a playing things like rings and other sound sources that are possibly being filtered and all of that, you prepared all of these loops in samplers yes, yes, inside yes, of the 301. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I set it up that way so it's mostly stuff from the peak yeah. or i took like loops that i've done for tracks so i can play like material that people would know yeah. maybe which is brilliant like i've been thinking about the fact yeah. that i cannot play live something that i've made before on that's on a recording like i have no way of of ever doing that pretty much there was a time when i was using the mono uh with <laughs> ansible i was using uh, Kriya, and I had Kriya presets, and I could sort of repeat some things. There was that one thing in 13 that I used as the main thing during the um, Holy Fire set that I then repeated at Moogfest. 
but other other than that you know i can't really repeat things like that and so i think that's really cool to be able to be like hey it's it's that song it sounds like that song that austin does you know or whatever it sounds like that our benny track like to be able to show up and and have that um i would guess that it also feels like not a safety net but it feels more secure having that be already there like it's a fallback almost in a way like it's everything is not going to necessarily just stop you know when you're trying to yeah. make it all completely live like i mean it's not that it's not live but you know what i mean like having those those things plus the fact that you're using pre-produced material so the sound quality is probably going to be even better in a way right i mean it's going to be better than just like rings into clouds <laughs> like like it's not yeah. just rings like it's it's all been eq'd and processed and possibly run through tape and whatever you did for recordings yeah. right yeah yeah it's like a way that i could have my tape sounds in person without needing to bring my tape machine yeah. or the you know have the stuff the sounds that i use peak for yeah. um and it's something i go back and forth on like am i just doing what a dj does <laughs> But no I, I think it's more like I, I, cause I, you know, I'm, I'm not just like pressing play on clips. Like I'm still yeah. making new loops on the fly and doing stuff like, I don't know, really like, it's not going to sound the same every single time. Exactly. It's the, it's the context. It's the contextualization that yeah. you've, that you've got going on. So yeah, I, I, I see it as, as a live performance. If you stop doing things the music wouldn't continue to breathe be alive therefore yeah. i mean granted you could say that even for for djs though i'm curious what griffin has to say about this i know he does um that you know um yeah it's kind of like yeah like scott campbell's saying here remixing it it is kind of like remixing, yeah. but it's remixing from stems in a way yeah you know um but it is sort of like a dub approach without doing literal dub effects you know um yeah dj modular oh no yeah no <laughs> well now i'm gonna have to stop playing live yeah yeah i was called dj light bath once by um rain wilson uh from, oh, from really? the office um yeah did i ever tell you that story austin i know i've told some other people oh, this did story. you meet him yeah i i opened for him i literally played a modular piece before when? he did what a talk fuck? this is when i was in portland he came down to portland um to do a talk at that at the place where i was staying and um like not the place but my place was like adjacent to the place where he was you know he came and i he was like what do you do and i was like yeah i play with this synth and stuff he's like do you want to play before i talk and i was like yeah what the hell? so he kept referring to me as dj light bath throughout the whole night and, and i'd be like no, no, it's just light bath. <laughs> and he just kept playing that joke out because he saw how I reacted to it. And um, wow. yeah, it was pretty good. It was good times. I, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was totally cool. Yeah. And did he take you to uh, Shroot Farms? Yeah, we, we, did, we did nothing other than refer to each other as, actually not each other. I should have called him DJ Rain. Did you keep looking at the camera? Like, yeah. Yeah, it like would have Jim. Been, I totally should have. There was a camera there too. I did, but I, oh. I, don't, I don't think there was. Um, oh, no, like wait, a no. shrug? no, the camera was actually my camera because I was taking photos during it for the the peop, the hosts. Uh. Um, yeah, exactly. Could have done those those moves. But yeah, okay. So, um, well, I think this is probably the most we can we can talk about this setup without knowing like what really is going on in there but other other than that it's saying that you know you're sending things to your effects and you're playing the effects and there's so much music that can be made with effects like that's that's kind of how it's how you make music with the modular anyway it's like there's that layer of we've talked about this in the last live stream i think there's that layer of of excuse me of bubbly of notes and that's one thing. And then there's the abstraction of that with the effects. And so you're doing all that abstraction stuff. And I mean, that, that, that's, that's amazing. Um, I'm a little curious, though, I guess, before we move on from this, what the Empress deal with the Zoya, what, what that 
does and how you used it. I remember you telling me that, like, because I've not looked into it, and maybe some of the viewers are, are aware of this, but it, you can set up all of these, um, like, macro, like, effects kind of things, like, that do a lot of things. Like, one button is going to do a lot, right? Is that, is that how the thing works? What, what, what goes down with that? Yeah, so, I mean, in this context, I was just using it for delay and reverb and some looping as well. Okay, pitch shifting right. type stuff. Oh, right. Um, Who posted that? Was who's was somebody on the chat right now posted something like a couple months ago. It's like a loop. You can loop and you can have like a pitch up and a fifth up and, a, and like an octave down and an octave up and all probably, of this. I think that was Jogging House. That's, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was just using it in that context. But I mean, really, it's a modular in a pedal. So it's got... It's got the full modular, you know, approach on it. It's got like oscillators, filters, like logic stuff, um, like CV stuff, sequencers, not just effects. So it's really like a versatile thing to have. But wow. I, I was just using it, the most basic, you know, reverb and delay because I didn't want to rely just on clouds for reverb, you know, <laughs> have some other flavors. For real. And yeah. Sorry, I'm, but, I'm uh, noticing. Hey, everybody! I didn't. I wanted to do this on the. Uh, I wanted to do this on the sly, but I'm actually just going to ask you all, um, what is going on in the chat over here with um, with someone talking about going out to eat or something like that? Can <laughs> someone tell me, like, give me some context? Is, is this person like for real, or are they just like spamming? Cause if they're spamming, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kick them off. I'm gonna put them in timeout. <laughs> timeout <laughs> zone. Yeah. So somebody comment, let me know what's going on, um, and I'll, I'll take care of that. Uh, all right. So um, where where are we with things here? Oh wait, are we getting some comments coming in here now? Uh, yep, blocked it. All right, cool, doing it. <laughs> um, they are gone. Boom. Thanks. So. Yeah, just a spammer. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, great. Oh, yeah. Here, let's go back to seeing. Oops. Sorry, I'm, I'm losing all the technical things because I have like 10 windows open and not sure which key commands are doing what to what. Okay. I do really want to try that Popeye's sandwich, though. <laughs> that I keep hearing about. He was like, go to Popeye's. Oh, man. So that's like a bot, right? Is that the way that works? It's just like a bot that's just like saying these things. Someone trolling. Yeah. It's like a troll bot. So, so back to albums. So Austin released an album, a real album, an album on vinyl. He, 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 he wins. He won. I, I, it's not a game. Oh, it's a game. I'm it's reading. Not a game. I'm reading Ender's Game right now. Does anybody? I'm actually not reading. I've been having. Um, I've actually been having like a neurological eye a dream? issue. No, seriously, I got um, computer glasses, and they messed me up, and they messed up the muscles in my eyes, and it caused uh, mild vertigo symptoms. And um, so I can't use my eyes too much throughout the day b without feeling horrible. So I've been doing eye exercises. Um, but uh, so I don't read. I listen to audiobooks now. I've been listening to the audiobook for Ender's Game. But um, yeah, later on, Jogging House. Uh, good. I'm glad you were able to, to hop on. See you here later, Morris. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so Austin released an album. I think it's freaking amazing that it's that it's an actual album. And... I guess to my credit, I do have a track on a vinyl medium uh, on this patch CV thing. Um, truthfully, I've not listened yet to it um, because <laughs> I'm kind of far behind on things. But uh, I think it's I think it's just freaking great that Austin has this beautiful album. I'm stuck on side two right now. <laughs> uh, I, I was telling him yesterday. I'll put it on and the track if I comes on and I'm like, Oh, I think this is my favorite. I... And then, that's how it goes. Right. And then the next track comes on echoes verse. And I'm like, echoes no, verse. no, I think this one's my favorite. This is probably the one. So, so I'm this, cause I'm trying to like choose, a, choose a favorite. 
Uh, and then and fall standing alone again comes on. I'm like, Oh wait, no, I think this one is. And I just keep repeating side B looking for which one my favorite is probably what's going to happen is I'm going to go back to side A and, and think that's actually really awesome. But, um, Fun so, fact. So uh, uh, Griffin asks if they're blue blockers. Yes, they block blue light. That was the whole idea. But they also have a prescription because I learned that um, you, you don't notice it creeping up on you. Like uh, it's, I'm a, it's a little blurry. I put them on and I'm like, oh, I, I, I can see a little clearer now. But um, yes, this is what I look like with glasses. So <laughs> first in my life. So albums. This is all a segue to say that oh, I have them in the other room. I have the actual cassettes. I finally released, I finally released a cassette actually, which You should is, get them. You should get them to show people. Oh, it, in, in fact, um, here's a, here's a comment asking, um, are there any retailers in Europe to sell your EP? And the answer is yes. Right. Austin. That's it. Yeah. Uh, is Boomcat in the UK? Boom, Boomcat. Yeah, uh, I think they might be sold out. Norman Records. Norman, yeah. Um, there's also a record store in Germany that has them. I, yes. I can't uh, I know what you're talking recall. about. In fact, I just contacted them. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to look through my scent mail. Because <laughs> this brings up for me, I'm looking into... Uh, here, wait. It's... <laughs> More. <laughs> is it yeah. more music? Oh shoot! Okay. I think they might be sold out. <laughs> <laughs> you you uh -oh. just had to mute it. Um, uh, I know. I'm trying to find my mute button. Uh, my the touch <laughs> bar is broken. Okay. Yes. <laughs> is it more music? M O R R. Uh, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking into two uh, distributors. Uh, I think it was. Is it Norman and more probably? Uh, so that the selected public works that I am releasing at the end of the month can be available for, yeah, Norman, for, for much less of the monies because I realized that I've sold out of the 50, um, the first 50, that first run, that run, and not many of the orders were out of the U S and that's because shipping is ridiculous. Like you, you look at what the U S you know, it, it with domestically here, it's, it costs nothing if you do media mail. It's like three or four bucks or something like that. And that's awesome. But then you can't do international media mail. There's no such thing. And so it ends up being upwards to $20 for these like four cassettes in a box, which is kind of ridiculous. And I think it's amazing for the people that did order them that are actually paying that much money, like almost as much as the cassettes are costing, you know, them they're paying for shipping. And I'm grateful for that. But so I, I want to try to find some other uh, distribution options uh, so that... Carrier pigeon. Yeah, so that maybe I can do another run and, and tie it all down to, to a couple pigeons and have them work for birdseed, you know? Like, what do, <laughs> what do pigeons eat? Hot dogs? Uh, <laughs> napkins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bread. Once. Yeah. Bread. Exactly. Once when I was, a, when I was very young, I was at the beach and, uh, my cousin was holding a hot dog and a bun just like, but this. it wasn't a hot dog and it and, was a rock lobster. <laughs> and this, this, uh, no, not pigeon. The seagull came down and just grabbed the entire hot dog out of the bun. And he looked over and it was just a bun and it was, it was burned into my memory. <laughs> That, that, that sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> the moment there, yeah, seriously, it, and I'm pretty sure it did happen, though. Um, pretty sure it's not a. Yeah, it was in an African or European swallow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Monty Python. So let's see if there's any. Um, oh, what is what is Peter saying here? So, um, Boomcat and most others are sold out. Norman still has a few copies of the second pressing. So there you go, um, um, Giacomo. Who is it? Whoever asked that question, that's that's your answer. <laughs> um, yeah. So, a Norman Rockwell oh. piece. Oh yeah, it, it exactly. It it probably was, but I, I don't think I did. I don't think I made it up. I think it was real life. Hard to tell sometimes, but uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I I have these cassettes coming out, and Austin saying I should go get them. Um, maybe yeah. I will. Maybe I will go get them. All right. So let's do it this way. Austin. I'll just. 
I'll just answer any questions. Exactly. People can just answer and, questions. And maybe so. you can, um, maybe you can answer all the questions through effects. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Hurry. Okay. Kamikaze seagull action. Cool stuff. Um, okay. Get your questions in now. Uh, uh, uh oh. Can make some drum sounds. What field recorder do I use? I use a Zoom H6, and I use my phone because the phone is always on you. I think that I heard someone say like the best field, yeah, the best field recorder is the one you have on you. So yeah, uh, I have my phone everywhere. What got me into modular? I um yeah. So when I started messing with synths, I saw. Um, I started seeing like the mod- some modular videos pop up right around the time when uh, clouds <laughs> clouds came out, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I want to get into this." And uh, I didn't really quite understand it at first, and then I was like, oh, "Okay, it's all about like open signal flow, open architecture type of stuff." And I think that really spoke to how my my brain works. Like I was like, "Oh, I get to build my own instrument." Um, so that was kind of what really got me into it. Wow. Musical goals for 31. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really have any goals at the moment. Well, as the questions come through, I will. <laughs> um, Show the tapes. Yeah, here we go. So... Actually, I'll go full screen for me. Ooh, cassette recorders. So they're going to show up in a box like this with paper wrapped around them so they don't rattle around. Boom. Let's open them up. This is like unboxing videos. Bam. It's this like really nice little gray color. Taupe. Unboxing ASMR. Yeah. And your download code. So because those who purchased these, you saw that because they're a... See, Bandcamp doesn't allow for four albums to be all part of one thing. Uh, so there's no, like, they're not an album. They're only a merch item on Bandcamp. And merch items don't have downloads associated with them. So you didn't get a download right away. You get your individual cards inside of each album. And, um, yeah, and then we'll, this is it. That's how it goes. So there, you saw some stuff came through, Austin. You, um, your favorite cassette recorders and what acoustic instruments do you use? That's the that's yeah. the question that came on here. So, I mean, I guess my favorite cassette recorders are the ones that I have. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my favorite favorite is the Marantz PMD-221. Uh, just because you could live monitor what's being recorded to the tape Which as it's being had, recorded. You had sent to me at one point and then I sent it back to you. Yeah. Because my, I had two of them and one of them ended up breaking. Yeah. <laughs> and the one I sent to you was actually, I actually sent got it Nathan from Nathan Moody. Moody. Yeah. Or you got it from Nathan Moody. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been in the hands of, uh, some interesting people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now it's my, the only one that I have that still works. So I'm never giving it up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate then, that you um, sent it though. I think I have a Tascam Porta Studio. I forgot which one it is. I, I still really like that. 414? Uh, no, it's the it's the Porta Studio, so it's like the smaller one. Oh. It's yeah. like Porta Studio 02 or 03, one of those two. Oh, one of the old ones. Yeah. Cool. Does it have the flat then, knobs? The flat knobs one is so cool looking. What is probably the flat after knobs? That. It's probably not that. It's one of the super old ones. They, they're like flat yeah. little knobs. It's great for transporting, though. It's like what um, Aunt Annie had for a while there. Mm, no, 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 yeah, no. This is uh, different than that. Yeah, and this is that was my first tape recorder that I bought in high school. I bought it for thirty bucks. No one was into cassettes back then. Yeah. So I was like, 
it's like it's like that time Tar Center or in, something in the like in the 90s or the late 80s or when when like nobody was into offset guitars like jazz masters and jaguars and stuff and like everybody was able to like buy them up for like 400 like the vintage ones buy them up for yeah. like 400 bucks and now they're like those are my favorite guitars <laughs> yeah well, yeah same but i never bought um, one when they were you know cheap so yeah uh other acoustic instruments one last tape recorder. <laughs> uh, I think it's oh, the yeah. 424 Mark III oh, okay. um, that I have. The super, which is like the big one. Yeah, um, that one is the my main, the main one that I've been using for four track stuff now because my Porta Studio is kind of on the fritz a little bit. So, uh, yeah, yeah, acoustic instruments, uh, guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's about it, really. I Electric mean, yeah. guitar or acoustic guitar. Uh, I've played both. I have both. Yeah. I recently got this. Um, I inherited it from my grandparents. It's a, oh, I forgot the name, but it's like a four string guitar, but it's not a ukulele. Trace. I know that's like the word for three, yeah. but I think it's called that there. At least there's a, whatever, keep, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> There's like an I guess it's instrument, I think. supposed cool. to be tuned like the same way a violin would be tuned. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, what's his name which from is, the Dirty Three? Warren Ellis fifths. plays when, when he plays with Nick Cave. It's it's tuned in fifths, so you have an yeah. extra note, an extra, like, note to play when you play scales. Exactly. You have to play four notes per string, right? Yeah, instead yeah. of the normal three. That'd be weird. I, I tried that once, tuning my guitar in fifths. Um, I mean, yeah, you could tune it to a normal thing, but it's like a, it's like halfway between a ukulele and a guitar. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I never learned how to play drums, <laughs> and yeah, I'm. I guess I could technically play piano if that counts as a, as a instrument. But you don't have an actual piano that gets used. Like no. Yeah. New, no new goals for 31 piano. Okay. There we go. M get a piano. M Kem Kembalel 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 says, tenor um, I think that's what it is. Could be yeah. a tenor guitar. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So we've, we've gotten a, um, a request that I do a patch from scratch video I will make another video eventually like that. I will be continuing. All these are, are to be series, you know, like the idea is that the light bath zone is where I make videos that describe, I mean, you know, break apart the pieces that I've already made. And then um, the joy of patching is to do a patch from scratch video. So I will be doing more. I won't be doing that right now, <laughs> but um, because the patch is actually the same patch right now from, that joy <laughs> patching, which I haven't recorded yet. And I kind of want to record it before I have a move coming up here. That's going to have to tear that off the wall. And I kind of just want to get a nice recording of it beforehand. I don't know if it's going to happen, but you know, I haven't touched it since. So, well, I have touched to it. To start I've... off the next one, you should ha have t the video of you taking out all the patch cables Yeah, or like a time-lapse or something. Yeah. Right. A time-lapse of like three months or whatever it's going to be moving yeah. or setting up. It'd be, it'd be, pretty uninteresting so then and austin is this something you would like to do oh uh, maybe uh sure <laughs> i think it'd be a fun thing to do maybe i would do it as like a live stream type of thing yeah just see what happens um like yeah. creating a patch i'd be into that i'd like to see that and we sort of did that in the last thing too you did yeah, some live patching yeah. so um so axel is asking this like if you go back to the avril 14th live stream that we had um austin does do a little bit of live patching and we we show his um his his process so if you think about it all patching is really live well but it's only <laughs> live if it's being videotaped if a tree falls you know um if a tree falls is it live <laughs> so what's your post process post process so in other words i'm guessing like after you have recorded something mm. you know well first off before yeah. then i mean we could even get into like how do you record i press the red button 
But now you <laughs> used to just record the entire patch all at once as a stereo file, some of the old things. That was like full blossom was that, right? It was partially that. Some of the tracks, right. So I, I'd say my, my anything on my YouTube is kind of like that, like a full thing. Mm-hmm. And then I every every on every album there's maybe one or two tracks that are like that, like a full patch, as opposed to multi-tracking things. Okay. Uh, even yeah. Even Echoes verse. Yeah. So I think the track. Uh, what's the, uh, I forgot my own track name. Felt. No, that's here. definitely not live. <laughs> Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, if I is definitely live, and uh, Loma is also live as well. Whoa. Well, I did add like some stuff, like field recordings and stuff later on. Yes, but, but the, the, they're all what they're both one take. The music like, is a one, one take, take performance. Wow. Uh, and not multi track because that interface you were using has only two inputs. Right. Yes. Yeah. So usually, if I'm recording, I'll just record one layer at a time and then kind of edit it as I go. Um, ah. So like the post process, there's not really that much. Like it's mostly just mixing. I don't really do too much EQing. Like I just will EQ as I go along, just whatever sounds good. And then, uh, yeah, usually I'll hand it off to someone to master it. Usually Nathan Moody, if I do, if I'm doing a self release and, uh, Ian Hoggood, who has done some the albums I put out on Dow, yeah, and um, yeah, the person that Boris has for Sale Records did a pretty good job mastering those tracks as well. But I, I don't master my own stuff. <laughs> that's amazing to hear. You don't do a lot of EQ. I like obsess over EQ. <laughs> like I, I like really cut out a lot of stuff. I, I do a lot of cutting uh, with my stuff, like a ton of each track, like multi track um so i use um ableton and logic depending on what i'm doing i'm new to logic what what do you use austin i i use reaper oh yeah Um, that's right cool because i i don't even use any anything (laughs) i just use it basically as just a way to record like it's almost like a tape recorder recorder yeah a tape machine I, i feel like it's it's just no frills if you don't want it to be. Yeah. So I kind of like that aspect. Yeah. I have d- started dabbling some with some plugin type stuff. Like on Echoes Verse, there is some plugins used. Um, like what? Yeah. I <laughs> I'd have to look it up, but uh, one of them is like this lo-fi thing. So like I added like even though this is the album is going to be released on vinyl, I added like vinyl crackles, yeah. but they're like buried so deep in there. Like every, the tracks that were multi-tracked have like 30 layers of stuff going what? on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Some of these yeah. layers are super sparse. Then it's like event. And then like you would never space. know that it's there. Yeah. Oh, okay. but then you, you would know if it was like missing that. if I took it out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of I like the idea of like having all these parts put together and it almost sounds like one thing but then really it's like five things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to remember this. I I will sometimes do that kind of layering with effects meaning like in, mm. in Ableton for example the way you can group things. I'll do like these effects grouped and then make another parallel stream with other effects and have the signal basically be malted out to different groups of effects and have them all be parallel. Like, I'll, but I, I haven't done a lot with actually multi-tracking. Like, it my process my process is like the almost the inverse of that, to where something like a great example that that sort of blew my mind was when I was going back to all of these. Um, tracks that I had made over the last four years to make this selected public works thing. I went back to one of the early ones, um, social contours and it's three stereo tracks. Mm. Like that's it. That's all it is. Sometimes and, like the simple, simple is best, you know? Well, cause most of these, most of the tracks are all live. Actually they're all live performed. Um, the one with Lampeo though has a little bit of editing in it. Um, but it was just a two track recording though. But I just edited like, the intro you know which was like another part of the jam and then we came in but 
you know, so it, it ends up being very few parts, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll sculpt them, you know, and I'll even like, like I talked about this in one of the creative mentorship videos, like I'll sculpt the EQ throughout the track, like in different ways, like, yeah. so as to make like, now it's a little more, there's not a lot of lows. Now I'm going to let the lows come in a little bit more. Let me soften the highs a little bit here. Like I'll, I'll do volume dips, like volume curves to try to make everything a little more even if some like certain frequencies are sticking out a little too much at one point, like I'll, I'll pull them down. This is like when you've recorded like, a mix, like when you can't actually mix each one separately, <laughs> do it again. I, you didn't catch what you, what you had done. Dip. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So we have some more questions. Uh, let's, let's see if we can go through. Oh, well, you, you still... master, you master your own recordings or you did for this project, I right? I did, man. It was so much work. And that's actually what caused this like eye issue with me. This like dizziness and stuff. Like I was sitting at the computer like 10 hours a day wearing new glasses that were using muscles that I wasn't used to. And I was like doing this with my neck instead of this. Um, I learned to master and that's, I'm not a master at it. I, I don't really totally know what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing a lot more than I did at the beginning of the summer, you know, and I'm happy I did it. It was a lot of work and I probably won't do that much work on my own for release again. I don't think it's worth it. It's better to just like hand it over to Nathan Moody and pay him what he should be paid for it and just be done with it, you know? But, um, Right now, it, it, I, I tend to have this idea that I have more time than I do money, but um, the truth is I end up doing so many things with my time, I don't have the time either, you know, so, but it's, it's, it's good. It was good education to go through it all, and it felt right to me to, like, to, like, do these things, to, like, go through every one of them, like, these, it's like, it, I, I incorporated all of this old stuff into me and got to know it, and then was able to release it, like, it, instead of just passing it off to someone. But if, if I do a real, al or when I do a, like a real album, like a new material album, I will, I will give it to somebody to master. I, I don't think I'll be mastering that myself. When it, when it comes out on Warp Records. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Warp, uh, that would be, wouldn't that be something? Um, of course it's going to come out on Warp, you know? Warp. Uh, so are all, are these all the recordings from YouTube vids and past performances? Yes. Um, everything mm -hmm. on, these cassettes, except for one track, is unreleased. And that track actually is going to be dropping this Friday. <gasps> I said it. Was I even supposed to say that? Um, how's it work in, this, in these days? Something off of this one. Um, I mean, people know this. If you just look at it, you, you, you know that, I mean, if people know my stuff, they're going to be like cathartic pressure waves featuring amulets. What? So that track, we have a video, Amulets and I shot video when I was in Portland last year. And when we shout made out to piece, Amulets. Yeah, total, total shout out to Amulets. <laughs> so he, it, it was a lot of fun. And on that track, I play guitar. I don't play any modular. And Amulets plays his suitcase. And it's so cool that we were able to get it on video and like, yeah, uh, it it's great, and it's like it's a it's like a drone piece. Like it's, I never do that kind of stuff. Well, I guess kind of sometimes, but um, the guitar solo really surprised me in it, though. <laughs> the tapping part. I was like, you're gonna use that much wah? That's yeah, yeah, crazy. The teeth. I did the teeth thing, and then the behind the. It's pretty amazing. So wait, you see the video? It's it's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah. It's pretty uh, gnarly. I've but, seen it before. But yes, the the selected public works are are selects from the last, from the past four years, you know, not all of them, not, not just a few of them, but you know, a little more than a few. So yeah. What else we got on here? Um, all right. So the Euro rack mounted on the wall. So if you have not seen the joy of patching video, go look at the joy of patching video. I use that Euro rack that's on the wall and it basically is everything I could possibly say about that is basically in that hour and 15 minute video of me live patching it. Except what I don't say is it is two submodular cases with Ikea shelves. Um, four Ikea shelves. So hard to, Moss Landa? How to go backwards. Say what? Is it Moss Landa? Oh yeah. I don't remember what they were. The Skogsta? <laughs> yeah, seriously. What was I'm the one? Fan there of was Ikea. Some, uh, I follow this Twitter account that's called you had one job and it's like all of these like, mistakes and stuff all these fails and 
it's um yeah okay it's a kid's bed okay it's a children's bed and it's called kidnapper <laughs> it's like oh man i don't even know that's real but it's too perfect but yeah so the shelves are boom at the bottom boom at the top and then another one flipped the other way for the bottom of that and then the top and they just happen to fit it perfectly except i had to put some felt like sticky felt inside to like build them up so that the the jacks weren't under the lip of the how do i yeah, okay, so you've got a lip like that, and the case is sitting in here. I had to, like, build it up and out like that, and so that's all I did. I might make a video about it someday, like, saying, showing, like, how I made it, because I think it's just brilliant. It fits the cases perfectly and looks So it sounds awesome. like you are using Mosslanda, then. I guess so. <laughs> you, you really know you're, uh, you, you're... Actually, it's over on the Light Bath Mall. If you go to the Light Bath Mall... <laughs> And you'll, the, the shelves are linked on there. Like that's, and yes, those are affiliate I, links for me. So I, do I, get I just moved. For that. So I've been to Ikea maybe like six times in the past month. So that's why I'm familiar with all the. Whoa, Bo Beats is on here. Did you know that Bo's on board? I didn't know Bo oh, was hi. on here. He's like proud of the shelves named Hyla. <laughs> Hala, Hyla. That's Hyla cool. <laughs> So, so that's what, that's what I, I just scrolled and I lost where we were. Um, somebody asked a little while ago, Austin, do you still use the lo-fi junkie? And no, you don't, uh, do you? Uh, no, I don't have it right now. I am, I'd like to get it again, actually. Really? Oh. But probably the pedal version. Whoa. Yeah. I'm hearing weird phasing with my voice. Are you guys hearing that? Is everybody? Uh, whatever's. I don't really hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Yep. Oh yeah, no chance that they're gonna fall. They're on. So I, I have them with. Um, I have them installed. Each screw is a fifty-pound wall anchor, and there are three screws per shelf. So that's six screws per Eurorack thing, and the cases are super light. And I'd have to lean on them really hard, and I don't even think they would fall then. Um, but I'm not going to try because it would mean more spackling for me, But and, which I'm going to have to do once I'm moving out of here. But, okay, so what else we got here? What's happening? Um, there's a real funny gif of a huge demon coming out behind a house, and it says when you're trying... To pronounce Ikea products. Yeah, exactly. You end up summoning a demon by trying to pronounce a couple names of, of Ikea <laughs> products. I wonder if Bo finds that to be um, funny. If it's like a funny to Swedes. Isn't that where you live, Bo? Did I get that right? Um, let's see. I love that he has my comment up. It's a super bad joke. <laughs> Oh, it means show. Oh, it's a joke. Oh, geez. All right. So, so apparently that's not. Is that really the name of the shelf, though, or is it you're just making a Swedish joke that only the Swedes are going to get? And I didn't get it. But thanks for explaining it. Um, when's the move happening for me? Um, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. So very soon. Yeah. Yes, I'm Swedish. <laughs> he says. Good. Thanks, Bo. Thanks for tuning in, too. Wow. All right. So, so you know, yeah, I got these cassettes. That's Is that the, the... Wait, say what? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, just, you know, here they are, out of order. I've started packaging them up. They're not going to be shipped out until, you know, right before release date so that people re receive them on the release date because that's what you're supposed to do. But let me tell you, it was fun to actually hold in my hand a real cassette of my stuff. And now I know I did have a cassette out that, that split with Emily Sprague that, you know, was on command and revenge and stuff in the winter. And I, th that, that was cool. And that was actually the first, no, the first cassette was actually, um, uh, on, on style records on jogging houses, daily deal with the, with the friends thing that you and I were on together, Austin. Um, but this is like, 
to have these pieces on it, it really, you know, that's not a live thing like, like the command thing was. It felt, it feels good to have an actual thing, to actually make a physical thing, and it's long overdue. So I'm happy to have done that, and I'm happy to move on to some new things now. Um, it felt like a good way of closing the book on some of that, so I can, like, move on to new creative, you know, things. Um, so favorite microphones. I actually, um, I like this microphone. <laughs> I only own two microphones. I own this and an AKG C1000 that I bought when I was in high school. And the C1000 is like a small diaphragm condenser. And it's nice because you can, you can put a little thing on the capsule and you can change it from cardioid to hypercardioid. So it works great as a room mic, like, like production style room mic. Like I could have it hidden up here, pointed at me and it would sound good. It would reject some of the side um, frequencies. Austin, what do you have any microphones? What do you use? I do not have any microphones. I'm I'm using my Zoom recorder right now. You have oh, actually I know I do that. have microphones. I oh, do have boy. microphones. Um, I'm Austin the I house. got these. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Keep going, Austin. Oh, um, I bought. Uh, I forgot where it's from. Norway. These like little, little oh, stereo yeah. mics. Uh, the, um, and they're like super sensitive. It's not. I bought them for field recording stuff. Lu Lom. Oh. Loam? Is that what no, it is? No, it's another oh, okay. it's another company besides Loam. Okay. I'd have to look it up. I think they're from Norway. So I, I have those. So I guess those would be my favorite. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, I, SM57. I, yeah, exactly. Neither of us are really super microphone people. Like I, I don't do a lot of yeah. Um I got this so that I could talk into it and make it easier and have it sound good because I'm in this tiny room here that like is super reverberant. And so if I talk straight into it and where, like I, I chap my lips when I'm talking on it, like I'm there getting chapped right now. Cause I'm like rubbing <laughs> up against this thing, but yeah. Um, now Bo beats you're, you're allowed here because you have a cassette. You don't have a cassette player. That's, that's totally cool. Um, but you know, uh, cassette players in your heart. Yeah. Uh, but it's great to see, um, Heinbach on here, man. Uh, I was so into, I mean, it was a heavy video, but, um, the video you did with the, with, with, with the hate comments and stuff like way to, way to transmute and way to, that's a, that's a magical act. That's a powerful act to just be like, here, this is, this is what I'm going to do with this, you know? So do you catch any of that, Austin? Do you see what, um, yeah, yeah, yeah I loved it. Yeah. W way to way to freaking go so all right well that that's pretty much with these these questions was there anything else that we wanted to talk about i guess um the other than the birthday eagle oh i meant to pick up <laughs> another photo of the birthday eagle to to put on the screen here and i and i totally forgot um yeah well well, it, actually, there is something before we move on. There's something that I do want to um, mention. I, I mentioned a little bit earlier about European distribution, right, for my cassettes. And I actually want to literally ask everyone, anyone who's watching, like, if you did not order these, and if you do want your own copy, but you were kind of kept from doing it because of the shipping... Like, reach out to me in some way. Let me know. Because I'm trying to, like, take, like, a tally of interested parties. And if there are enough interested parties, I will, I will like, do another run. Um, I've already reached out to some distributors. Maybe they're going to be interested. Maybe they're not going to be interested. If I can say, like, hey, I, here's 50 people who want them. Like, that's probably more of a chance that the distributor is going to be like, yeah, we'll take your cassette, you know? So... Yeah, so just let, let me know about that. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's something else that we, we wanted to maybe talk about, and that's the little music that I made the other day was basically, that, that I put on the um, promo video for this, was done oh, yeah. by taking Austin's cassette loop and playing it. And then bringing in, oh, I have to retune the cassette. 
<laughs> this is going to be hard to figure it out. Oh, I, I can't do it. I hear the cassette <laughs> as the root now. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. Nah. It's a little weird. It sounds mixolydian. <laughs> no. Whatever. Yeah, I took Austin's <laughs> cassette and then I put some of my like stuff on it. And so that was the first unofficial collaboration. Because uh, the two of us have never made music together or anything yet. And, but we want to. Am I right, Austin? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Just checking. Whew, boy, sweating <laughs> that one for a minute. No, but you know, like, uh, I, th I, th I think, I think this is going to happen sometime next year, yes. sometime in 2020. It's probably going to happen. This is a hint. Hint. There's a hint. <laughs> oh, you're giving it away. <laughs> I was trying well, I'm not giving anything away. Super sly. No, no, no. I was trying to be super sly yeah. about it. Let's say well, next year something will happen. Yeah, we have something planned. There's something planned. It, it it might not be like released for quite some time. I mean, who knows? Like, but we have something planned for like springtime, spring summer ish when we'll probably be when we'll do it. So summer ish. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows when? Um, oh yeah, Hi Wax saying um, that uh, vinyl arrived two weeks ago. Love the album. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> Our collaboration will be all Longmont Potion Castle. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Reprocessed <laughs> through our effects. Yes. We did have some names, didn't we? I'm seeing some some um, Light Benny and Arbath. We had some tweets about that. What presidential run? What was it? Do you remember? Was it that? Uh, was it just Arbath? Uh, I, I don't know. remember. I feel like we had something like really clever, <laughs> but it might have just been our bath. Yeah. So. Yeah. Light Benny. <laughs> yeah. Um. L Benny. Yeah. That's too cryptic, though. L. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So well, all the other balloons are still there. I, that's what I was just thinking. I I kind of want to um. Do you think we're you think we're wrapping it up here? You think we're pretty much? Uh, is there anything else you wanna you wanna talk about? Because... We're an hour or two or something. Yeah. Where yeah. are we? Yeah. Hour forty three. Go for a little bit longer. Well, that's good. Um... Gonna... Oh no! Start popping some balloons. <laughs> you know, it's the countdown. Popping. It's it's popping. Arbathy, I like that. <laughs> Arbathy, yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is the first time this has ever happened. No, but thank you, Heinbach. No one has ever done the super chat. I didn't even know what the super chat was until this this weekend. I realized super chat I allows people to I don't donate. know what it is. So that means um, one euro goes to you, Austin, and one uh, you'll be you'll be getting a PayPal from me for the for one euro. Um, uh, okay, okay. Heinbach just just sent uh, just sent two of them over Hi, our right. way. Thanks for being the first. So awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Cool. Wait, what did I say on my last stream? What was it that I, what was I just talking about? ATK Modular says Lightbath. You said that in your last stream. Get on it. What was it that I said? What was I just talking about that I didn't that I said I was gonna do on my last stream, but then I didn't even do on this one? I don't remember. I'll have to wait because there's a there's like a latency to this in the meantime <laughs> i'm gonna do another balloon countdown do i go ooh, do i go side to side or do i go around around symmetry okay wait symmetry is side to side oh yeah <laughs> no side to side okay side to side yes whoa that one sounded weird oh oh right okay everybody i have something uh, really exciting. Check it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that.
I don't think it's going through the effects. I don't think it's going through the effects either. What is happening? It was funny when we did it when we were testing it. It yesterday. was. <laughs> it's, it's not doing it, is it? No. Oh, man. Let's try this one. So, I, if, if anyone knows how to use auto-tune, I've got it, but it doesn't work when I, <laughs> when I, when I do. Griffin Paisley, thanks so much, Duder. You yeah, get yesterday, we were Austin. running the balloon through auto-tunes. Yeah, we were, I had auto-tune. I was auto-tuning balloons, and it was freaking amazing. Um, yeah. Volts per octave tracking sounds off. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not... I have all the settings. Like, I'm even using presets that are supposed to sound like super robotic and stuff. It's set to where it's supposed to be doing it. Um, Peter's cat is scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, it's, it's totally You're scaring not. his cat. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. Please send my apologies to your cat. All right, I'm turning auto tune off and I'm I'm really kind of I'm kind of disappointed. Like I really wanted auto tune to work and it's not like it didn't cost money. And so, you know, I feel like I'm not getting my auto tune's worth, my money's worth with auto tune. Um one thing I wanted to bring up when we were talking about the live setup stuff. Yeah. Like in response to that, like doing live, I guess what live remixing type of stuff, yeah. I've gone to just doing completely playing live, like improvising stuff. Right. Which, but I, I, that's what summit. I did at my my last gig. Yeah. So I was just like playing the summit into the Coco Qantas and with the Zoya making loops and stuff, and it was very interesting. <laughs> wow. How how did it go? How did it feel? Um. It was okay. Um, yeah. I actually recorded a version of the set. I did a, like a, there was a radio show. I'll, I'll have to link to it. Uh, but there's an hour long recording out there on SoundCloud. Oh, of cool. Just that. So. Very cool. Oh, wait, let's, let's say goodbye. To, Heimbach says, gotta go. Yo, thanks for, thanks for coming on, man. See you later, dude. <laughs> yeah. Adios. And ATK. Uh, oh, this sounds like a fever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Bjork Fever Ray track is is awesome. Wait, there's, there's a, a Bjork, Bjork Fever Ray track? track? Yeah. I'd say look at Wait. my Instagram stories, but that that's what? already gone. Yeah. You gotta send this to me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ATK is saying it was the R. Benny Lightbath collab is what was uh, yeah. we've been saying about for a while. So, uh, there's, and 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 um, yeah. many thanks, good old ESC. I won't say your actual name, but I know who you are. Um, tossed a, tossed a couple bucks to us. Thank you. <laughs> so, since we're closing out, uh, or no, let, uh, let let me pick up on what you were just saying about the playing. Um, yeah. So. How did it feel? It felt new. Well, it was just the uh, intimidating, maybe. Yes. That's the right word. Oh yeah. It's not my usual thing, so definitely ha had the chance for things to go wrong, and there's definitely some things that didn't go exactly how I thought they would. So was that a technical thing, or was that a putting notes into the keyboard kind of a thing. You know, was it a human putting playing Putting notes thing? into the keyboard type of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was it a, oh, I didn't mean to play that note, now it's in the looper, oh, damn, kind of a thing? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. See, back in the day, I used to play guitar into that kind of stuff. and But I, I had been a guitar player for long enough that, like, rarely, I mean, it happened. It always happens where you hit a note you don't mean to hit. But, like, it didn't happen too much. I would be a little intimidated to actually bring a keyboard and to do that. Like, I don't feel quite as comfortable with a keyboard, um, to, to do that kind of looping thing. So I think it's very, um, very brave of you to do that. Um, you know, but I, I think it's really cool that you, you, that you're taking that, that approach to that, like completely new 
I'm going to create this on the spot and do the process and show you the whole process thing, you know? So, yeah. Um, I'm, I, I put the link to the, the recording recorded version that I did. Oh, uh, that doesn't have as many mess mess ups. Did you put it in the chat? So I just put it in right now. Okay. It'll probably take a second to show up. On but the, the actual gig that I played, that was a, yeah, different, different experience for sure. I think I'm going to try to do that again. Uh, I have another local gig next month. So I'll probably try that out again. Yeah. Maybe we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I want to I I, I want to I don't I'm not ready to do that like like in that kind of context, but I wonder if in more of a like sound bath kind of context I could handle it. Something really mm-hmm. slow, something like that's not performance style, that's more just like glacial zones i bring like Ooh, glacial zones that's a good name for an album <laughs> calling it no 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 it's all you it's all you maybe that's <laughs> no, our, i get a uh, fair fog maybe the collab if we end up doing something super glacial, glacial then it could be glacial zones so you know by the way you're getting some getting some happy birthdays i've seen a few come in here um yeah thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you for Saying happy birthday, I appreciate it. <laughs> Even though I hate my birthday. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Good times. Oh, yo, orbital patterns. Man, this is great. This is so cool. I. I did not know this is a thing. It's like, yeah, I never. This is like, didn't even know it's a thing, and now people are hitting it up. So very, very cool. Um, we'll send a refund back. Send a refund. I don't feel yeah. comfortable taking people away yeah. just by talking. Hey man, it's uh it's 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 we're it's good info, man. It's it's good stuff. Um I feel plenty comfortable doing it. Um I also don't have another job. So <laughs> so um That's you know, yeah. Good. Uh but so uh, yeah. Okay, well that said we're moving along. I really do wish the auto tune would work. And seriously, somebody should like, if somebody really knows what's up with the, um, the UAD auto tune and how to get it working and they want to, uh, they want to like chat it up with me, hit me up somehow on, um, on some DM or, uh, contact form on my website or whatever. Slide to his DMs. Yeah. Woo. Oh, here, here. This, this is the way we do it. Watch this. Oops. So, check this out. I can do better than that. <laughs> and if, if anybody was curious curious what I'm using for, like, all the pitch the shifting stuff, stuff and all the stuff that I'm adding. Oh. Sorry about what's that. What's going on? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what was, are you using? Uh, I'm using the Deluge, the Synthstrom Deluge. I'll see if I can lift it up and show it in the... See. So anytime I do, do this, this, then yeah, yeah, my, my voice sounds voice different. different. <laughs> so. To, to answer yeah. one of the questions we just got through here, is the track set to monitor? Yeah, I'm not even setting it up through the DAW. I'm doing it in the um, the console, the UAD console. So it's just direct in the track, direct in the track. And it, it should be like, I can hear it a little bit, but it's something about the settings aren't like super obvious. And it's on the alto tenor input type. And when I put it on low male, I get this weird, like artifact clicking. Do you hear the clicking that's happening in the, my voice right now? Like, uh, that yeah. clicking, I don't know. So yeah, it's weirdness. But uh, I, I don't want to troubleshoot while we're on here. <laughs> but uh, I do want to try this effects thing in a second. So. <laughs> I was trying to pop the balloons without having the pen out. Uh, so I realize that does not work. So we're about to wrap this up. We only have two balloons left. And when those last... When the last balloon pops, we are done. So thank you everybody for for coming on and and hanging out while Austin and I just like shoot the, you know, we just like talk a little bit about some stuff. 
Austin says something funny with some pitch shift. Rubs his. These are like. I've had a lot of caffeine. Cat moves. <laughs> yeah, you have. I went to get Starbucks to get a small coffee, and I guess they accidentally messed up and gave me this giant one. So now I am, I am wired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good. This this one belongs on our uh, here. This comment b gets to stay until somebody outdoes it. Balloons into clouds. Balloons. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. One more. Only one. Help! I'm in a well. I'm <laughs> in a well. I'm trapped in a well. Ah! I'll see you later, Griffin. Yeah, peeps. See everybody. I guess we should wrap this up, eh? Yep. Just putting some things on here. Fun chat. Thanks. Happy birthdays. More of those. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. Here it goes. Here it's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we are. That is Fever Ray right there, actually. That's um, the knife. Oh, yeah. When, earlier when I said there was a collaboration with you. Did I say the knife? The knife.